DLC 5 was just announced and it is Byleth from Fire Emblem Three Houses. This character has a lot of interesting tools available to them so I wanted to analyze what the character kind of brings to the table, my thoughts in general, you know, the frame data, everything like that, kind of like what we did before the game came out because we actually have time between a character's announcement and like their trailers and when they come out for the first time ever. Thank you Sakurai for me not having to stress this. Something I just want to touch on is the fact that Sakurai did say that technically things could change from the time they recorded the video and when the character is released, since it's about two months apart, two and a half months apart, but at the same time, I feel like I remember the Terry uh, showcase basically had the same frame data as before, so I'm going to assume the frame data is the same, maybe with one or two frames less or more on every single move, but I wanted to go over that, the ranges of the moves, and what I think of this character overall. So first off, I want to talk about the ground frame data. Jab is frame 4, forward tilt is either frame 8 or frame 9, or frame 8 should be like above and then 9 is forward because it's a, you know, overhead swing. Up tilt is frame 10 at a diagonal in front of Byleth and then frame 11 just above. Down tilt is frame 13, dash attack is frame 9. Overall, that frame data is pretty okay for a character, especially considering the range that they have other than jab. I feel like jab probably should have been frame 3 or frame 2, considering the first jab is a punch, which isn't that big, especially considering the sword type. I'm gonna just put like the frame data on the screen right now, comparing Byleth's frame data and the other swordsman characters, just so you can get a general feel of what it's going to look like. But overall, I do think it is pretty good, especially considering how big down tilt is, being frame 13. It's kind of reasonable, because if it was any faster than that, like frame 7 or 8, we would just have Mewtwo down tilt from Smash 4, although obviously Obviously it may be punishable, I don't know. A big thing we do not have right now for the most part is frame data on shield. Like we don't know how minus things are because for the most part either computers were doing it and holding shield and it was ambiguous or moves just didn't go into shield at all. I do think dash attack is actually going to be a very vital move for Byleth because a lot of the times people are going to try to be approached because you have a giant sword. Unless, you know, of course you have a really good projectile in which case Byleth is going to have to approach, which that doesn't seem like it's going to be fun for this character unless Arrow is actually amazing. But dash attack is going to help kind of hit people that are committing towards you. Like I do it with Pikachu a lot. I do it with Zero Suit of like, people are going to run towards me. Time to dash attack. And it definitely catches a lot of people off guard. I think that will be very important. Obviously it seems like Dantled is a comp a move. Forward tilt is a move that just kind of puts your opponent above and away from you, so you can kind of maybe poke at them with forward airs, or maybe shoot an arrow to hit their landing. I'm not sure, although we'll get into the frame data of, uh, you know, aerials and specials a little bit later. But overall, I do think these tilts are very good. They're not going to make or break the character, in my opinion. They're not the strongest thing about this character, but they are still pretty good. Next, let's go over the frame data of the smash attacks. Forward smash, the crazy giant move, is frame 23. Down smash is frame 19. And up smash on the ground is frame 13. Up smash is going to be very important, and I want to stress this because it is often an important tool for characters to have out of shield. But frame 13 is going to be very slow. Slower than shield grab, which means it's basically not going to be usable out of shield. Unless they don't have a kill throw and up smash is going to kill like that. But like, as just a good out of shield option, it is not going to be very useful. Forward Smash, given the strength and the range of it, being 23, again, makes sense. A huge thing for this character, in my opinion, on determining, like, probably 10 spots on a tier list, is does Byleth's Forward Smash 2-frame. That is really important, because that move will kill at 40 if it 2-frames, or 50, and it is huge, so it's very, very safe to be able to just throw it out and get kills with it if it 2-frames. If not, you can still kind of catch people's ledge jumps with it. It's going to technically cover every ledge option if you time it right. Granted, the release seems pretty slow off of charge, but, and I didn't, I don't think I saw that frame data in the video, maybe I missed it, uh, but I didn't see that option, but, I mean, obviously, since it's so big, it will cover roll, even though it's a weaker hitbox. Neutral getup and jump are going to be timing-based, and, of course, it'll hit getup attack or a ledge hop aerial, because it'll just beat it out, because it's super disjointed. Down smash being frame 19 is pretty good. Again, it's not, like, crazy. You know, if they have a jab lock setup, maybe it'll be useful, uh, because it is definitely faster than forward smash, and it's still, I'm pretty sure, fast enough that it'll just hit regardless. Uh, so, it's a strong move, obviously, crazy strong. It's the Axe, uh, which is, I think, Edelgard's Axe. I didn't play Fire Emblem Three Houses, so if I'm wrong, my bad. Uh, but it seems like it's going to be pretty decent. Not a great down smash, but definitely, like, usable. I do think forward smash is going to be one of Byla's best tools in general, just because catching people that are approaching, catching people that are trying to land, it is huge and it kills so early. Again, the tipper mechanic makes sense, and I'm really happy that it's not just entirely powerful like all the way through. Like that would be kind of ridiculous. We don't need a Chrom forward smash that is the size of half the stage, so it is fine. Next up, let's go into some aerials. Forward air is going to be frame 12, back air frame 13, up air frame 9 or 10. I wasn't exactly sure because it's kind of ambiguous.
it was because the sword lights up, but I don't know if it's a hitbox yet. Nair is going to be frame six and down air frame 22. I do want to touch on down air really quick because that move did about half of a shield when it was uh, hitting the Marth shield in the squad strike. And it has nothing to do with the 5v1. There's no multiplier when it comes to that unless he for some reason put on comeback factor. But that does so much shield damage. You're going to really have to be careful when juggling this character because down air will break your shield and you will die mad early because of that down B, which again, I will get into a little bit later. So I just want to touch on that really, really quickly. The best aerial, in my opinion, for this character is going to be up air. It is just seemingly amazing. It is huge. It seems entirely disjointed. It seems like a crazy lingering hitbox, like maybe 10 or 15 frames of lingering, which is wild considering how big this move is. Obviously, I don't think it's that strong, but it is going to be a really good juggle situation. And then, of course, you can bait people into like air dodging in something like that. So you go like jump up air and then they air dodge and then you down smash or you forward smash or something like that so this is going to be really really key for eight or not it'll guard for byleth in general which granted of course an up air of a sword character is going to be important but byleth seems exceptionally important forward air and back air are also good i do think because of their size they can definitely hit a lot of people doing rising short hop aerials it will definitely beat things like pikachu's forward air and back air or palatina's neutral air or even maybe palatina's like forward air and back air although obviously palatina's back air is invincible so that's a little different but it will definitely outrange them so if you get a read on your opponent on their jump timings Byleth will have a really easy time just going for fares, back airs, up airs, and things like that, and kind of just smacking you out of the air with it. However, because of their lack of, you know, vertical hitboxes, that is going to make it a little bit easier to counterplay once you get used to Byleth's jump timings, or you just decide to stay on the ground, assuming again that the ground moves aren't particularly safe. I feel like that's going to be the hardest struggle for Byleth, is just ground movement and contesting characters that can just kind of bait and punish and whiff punish on the ground that are very fast, such as Pikachu, Palutena, you know, the general characters that just do well versus most characters in this game because of their ground movement and their punish options. I'm assuming back air is going to be stronger than forward air because it's one frame slower and just the general rule of smash is that back airs are stronger than forward airs. So I'm assuming it's going to kill probably around like 100, 110 at the ledge, maybe forward air like 120, 130 at the ledge because I don't think we really saw much data of it killing uh, in general, but I just that just sounds about right for a sword character, especially with a tipper mechanic like the back air and forward air have or like the, all the spear moves have. And Nair being frame six is also important because that means that by this fastest out of shield option of an aerial is going to be frame nine and again that is not great it's not bad like there are definitely characters with worse like greninja but if you're comparing like oh i'm better than greninja without a shield options that it's not exactly a good pick i also don't exactly know where the hitboxes start on this move like i don't know how ambiguous the hitboxes are how big the bubbles are so it might not even hit that low so if someone hits you with a landing aerial i don't know what byleth can do to punish and i will get into up a little later which would be the other out of shield option so it just seems like this character's best option is going to be either grab or neutral air, but neutral air might not even be that good. The lackluster airspeed of this character does have me worried for the potential strength of Byleth because I just don't think that like safe aerials are really going to be key for or, like possible I guess with this character because your dash forward isn't exactly that good. You are going to have to like dash forward, jump back, forward air, landing. I don't know how much landing lag it has and again something like that might change so the safety of moves might change on shield a little bit but it just... I don't know, it seems like maybe this character will be good. The aerials, I feel like, individually are pretty good, although I have seen images of, like, lol, the sword hitbox didn't work. It's, like, pits exactly, which is kind of funny, because that's what Sakurai literally said about Byleth's neutral air. It's hard to say Byleth this often. I feel like I'm, like, in a tongue twister. But anyway, I don't know. I think these aerials are pretty good in a vacuum, but, again, with the lackluster out of shield options that this character has shown so far, I am a bit worried they are going to crumble under pressure. And by worried, I mean happy about it, because I play Pikachu, and I'm just going to be able to just hit buttons against this character and it's gonna work and I will go into why right now with Byleth's special moves. The most important frame data of Byleth's special moves is going to be up B. The ground hitbox that Sakurai showed earlier starts on frame 11. That is not fast. Again, that is slower than a six frame shield grab if you get hit on shield. It is equal to a seven frame shield grab, but I don't think the up B beats shields, or maybe it does, I don't remember seeing that. But either way, that is not fast. That means that we don't know what Violet's grab uh, frame data is, because I don't think Sakurai did it a single time, and the only information we got was a dash grab on a two frame kind of weird video at the beginning. So 
we either have a 9 frame add a shield option with neutral air or a 10 or 11 I'm assuming shield grab and that's not good that is not good add a shield frame data it is not going to be able to really respond to a lot of characters pressure especially considering you can't do something like forward air add a shield or like dropping shield obviously takes 11 frames you know I think parrying is going to be very important with this character because parry jabs or parry f tilts or parry even dash attack is going to be incredibly good for this character however consistently having to parry is obviously very difficult and not really anyone does it except for maybe light the fox main from connecticut and he's like a top 10 player so it's not really going to be that easy but it's going to be i feel like very crucial for byleth in particular for the other frame data of the special moves the side b on the ground is 21 and 22 will hit the higher platforms it seems like it's minus 33 on shield from the thing of showing the marth which isn't exactly that good obviously in air it is a little bit faster it actually starts on frame 20 below it seems like frame 21 in front of it and frame 22 the above diagonal in front of Violet. so not super great uh, but not also not terrible considering again that move is absolutely ginormous it is huge neutral B is going to be frame 45 releases the air on frame 45 you can shield on frame 43 so I'm not really gonna knock a projectile for being slow because Thunder Jolt has really bad startup so that's still gonna be pretty good considering you can hold it for longer periods of time maybe bait air dodges with it especially considering you can like do arrow shield someone air dodges then you like run off and downer them or run off and forward air or nair or something like that this is definitely going to be a very good and a very crucial move uh, i don't know if it's transcendent it seems like it is i don't think you can really smack it or it's just really fast so good luck doing that in the first place but it seems transcendent from just looking at it or just from the way the animation looks i could be wrong about that but that is still going to be very good because if you can just kind of smack it with like a really easy like move like lingers like a dash attack or something like that it's going to make the arrow not that great and I didn't record the frame data of the down B because it's slower than Falcon Punch, so it's not good. And if you get hit by it, you're kind of just messing up. Please don't get hit by the drop through off platform. Please don't try to roll through it on ledge when they turn around. Just, just wait. Just chill. Just drop off ledge. It has so much lag. I know it has armor, but you shouldn't get hit by this move like ever, ever. Side B is fine because like frame like 20 something for a giant move, especially if you're landing, is fine. And honestly, side B I feel like is going to be very good because it's able to cover so much space, obviously, and it's going to be like, okay, good luck landing boom and just like time it uh you know for people's landing when they're going to have their landing frames or if they try to landing aerial it's not going to work you are going to have to play very carefully around this move and i think it is very very important that people know that this move is going to be a huge huge part of Byleth's play if you're landing in front of the character which means that it's not exactly safe to go away from above the character right like you think the up area is amazing you want to get to the side of it and then just run and do side b in the air and again of course those timings are going to be ambiguous and yes although it is technically reactable because you know you think a 12 frame you know reaction time although that's a little bit like not I can get into reaction times in a different video but 12 frames generally plus the lag of the game which is six frames so 18 frames so you do have three frames to react to it technically which isn't gonna be that bad especially considering it starts like the closest frame data is below it which isn't gonna be good so frame 22 above it uh, you know on the ground and in the air it's actually the same frame data for the uh, like above hitbox but that's still not going to be you know easy Easy to avoid because you had your landing lag you have options where it's like okay cool it covered everything or they're gonna guess right and if you air dodge then they like forward air you afterwards or up tilt or something like that or just take the stage so I feel like juggling for this character is obviously going to be the most important thing and I know I should say that like that's generally how sword characters work but that's not necessarily the case because I think when Lucina is playing that the biggest thing is edge guarding and edge trapping whereas you know Byleth seems like it's going to be just hitting you in the air and trying to keep you there then putting you on the ledge and obviously that seems like a pretty good position especially again if you have to worry about the two framing forward smash but just in general I do think that uh, it will be hard to land versus this character if you don't have something like a bouncing fish or a flip jump or a Quick attack, haha, -ha, Pikachu, yay. So now that I went over the frame data and some general analysis of the character, I do want to give my opinions. Of course, very early things might change, but I do want to give my early opinion of this character. I think that they will suffer a bit because they are slow. They are not fast. They're not going to be able to position themselves in the best spot all the time. Again, I don't necessarily think that's bad design because if they were faster like Lucina with the entire range and the strength and the damage output of this character, it seems like it would be pretty ridiculous so I do think it is valid that they are slow, not quite as slow as Corrin, but with a decent projectile, with good spacing normals that can combo into itself, I don't know how good of a combo game they have in general, but again, I'm also someone that is fine with sword characters not having 0 to 60s like Krom and Roy, like I think that is what makes them amazing characters, right? Because I don't think it fits the archetype considering it's like, cool, 
good luck winning neutral because we have a giant sword. Also, if we hit you, we're going to hit you six times and get you off stage. Like, that doesn't seem to match with the archetype as well. So I think a more neutral heavy character that has amazing punish tools, that has amazing range, big damage, makes a little bit more sense, and especially with a strong advantage state, but not necessarily a strong combo game. It doesn't feel like a lot of things link in, and again, they might change some of the angles of the moves. We don't know how good the throws are, and that is something I really wanted to talk about because throws obviously are a huge deal. If they have down throw up air, if they have down throw forward air, something like that for a decent amount of percent, that is going to make grab a much better option, which means that people can't just run in and shield all these moves because dash grabs will then come out and you will take 25 to 30 percent and then an advantage state, of course, you know, down throw into like up air, full hop up air, like something like that, or down throw up air into maybe side B or down throw your mashing air dodge into side B or something like that. There are many possibilities for this character. If you waste your jump against this character, it's going to be fairly difficult to land unless you just want to take a move for like fast fall air dodging, but sometimes that move can be forward smash and that's going to kill you at like 55 or 60 if you're at the ledge, as shown by the Marth dying incredibly early in that footage. So, I don't know, this character does have a lot of tools, but it's going to be difficult to keep up with the fast characters that are currently in like top tier. And also, I don't know how Byleth is going to deal with camping because Arrow, while good, I feel like is a lot less good than a lot of projectile heavy characters, such as let's say Pac-Man or Snake, and I think Game & Watch will do very well versus this character. So I feel like a lot of important characters in the meta right now are going to give Byleth a fairly difficult time. Unless they, of course, change the frame data on, let's say, up E or Nair, or something like that, like an add a shield option, or, of course, if these moves are just stronger, do more percent than I realize, which is totally possible because, again, the character is not out, but I do think this character is going to be a solid, like, high, mid, slash, low, high tier, because those options, when they work, seem like they're going to be very scary. It doesn't seem like you're going to need too much percent to close out stocks. Of course, if they have a kill throw, that's going to be really nice. If they have something like a really good positioning throw, like back throw into, like, oh, you have to DI away because otherwise you get back air, so you have to go to ledge, which then can set up edge trapping, things like that. I don't know, this character does seem like they can have a lot of tools, but again, the speed is going to be very crucial in why the character is not top tier, not broken, but again, if it was fast, then I feel like the character would kind of be toxic, so I'm totally fine with that. And yeah, that is going to be it for this one. Let me know down in the comments below if you agree or disagree with me. Of course, I know a lot of people are very happy about Violet being in the game, 100% pure excitement that I've seen on my timeline, so just let me know what you think of the character in general down below. As always, social media, panda, and partner stuff is down below. I'm sorry I haven't done my K rule video or my DK video because I was going to do them once I got back from visiting Canada, which I did like two days ago. But uh, because the patch is coming out soon, I figured I would just wait until then to make it in case they change again. And so, yeah, I will see you all next time.